So we had to go to the mall today to fix uh, Soap and Play Kayla number two's iPad because like it was whatever. And because we went to the mall, we got Cinnabon, which was awesome. And I was actually running through, you know, the house while the kidlets were supposed to be doing the dishes to come out here. And Soap and Play Kayla number one stops me and, you know, is talking to me and her mouth and her face is all covered in like stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? What, what is this? Because they had already had their cinnamon roll, right? But I had put mine out for after I was done with this, you know, it was my treat. And she's like, nothing. And I look over at the little plate that I'd put my cinnamon roll on and the cinnamon roll is still intact, but she had taken all of the frosting off. And the proof was on her face. And so uh, that has nothing whatsoever to do with today's, you know, recipe except it's cupcake bath bombs with cool bubble frosting, bubble bar frosting, and that's baked goods in a regular form, and this was baked, so I guess maybe it does, but you know, I'll tell you about the recipe that we're doing and all the things in just a minute, but before I do, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay, let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You're at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 32 of 365 days of soap, year two, and today's a recipe day. We are giving you a recipe for cupcake bath bombs. Now, we've given lots of recipes for bath bombs before, right? And so the thing that we're really gonna focus on is the recipe for the whipped frosting, the pipeable bubble bar frosting that does get hard enough to ship, very firm, very awesome, that we do you know, on the top of these bad boys. Now, that's cool. Bubble bars are one of those things, it's kind of difficult to find really good recipes just readily available. One of the reasons for that is bubble bar recipes can be difficult to formulate, and so people are not just giving up the goods, which I completely get. So, I'm gonna go ahead and give up the goods on this one, and we can uh, talk about all the stuff that goes into this, and why, most importantly. You know, in the video, while the Soap Prentice makes our summer line of cupcake bath bombs. Okay, so this is the bath bomb part. We're making the bombs. And I've given you this recipe a whole bunch of times. Do it again. It's a great recipe. It's two cups baking soda, half cup cornstarch, one cup citric acid, add it at the end, one tablespoon sunflower oil, one tablespoon water, use less water if you're in a very humid, humid area, and up to one tablespoon of your scent. And then, you know, the color and all that jazz. And we use micas, cut with a little bit of cornstarch to make them easier to mix into the batch. And again, we put the citric acid in last. Now, we use these little cupcake molds for the molds for the bath bomb and that actually becomes the packaging as well. So that's super awesome. We are going to be patting these down really, really firm into each of these containers to, you know, do the thing because we don't want them to be fragile for, you know, shipping and all the things. So that's the bath bomb part of this. But I want to talk about what's on my mind right now because I was going to start this voiceover talking about how uh, the soap and clay kidlet number two is driving me crazy because she's like a super night owl. Like she's awake 
all night long. But then I started thinking about the term night owl. It, wh wh why does that exist? See, that's the Soap Prentice really tamping this down really well. Forced to get everything in nice and tight. I don't understand why the term night owl exists. I mean, why don't we just say owl? Because do you know of a day owl? Owls are just night creatures. They're nocturnal. And so when we say someone is a night owl, that feels redundant, right? We should just say owl. And I know what you're thinking. We don't say owl because saying Sopan Clay Kid number two is an owl sounds weird. And it might be a little confusing. Like, like, like she's an owl, like for Halloween. But the only reason it sounds weird is because we don't say it that way. Like, we started off calling people night owls instead of just calling people owls to describe their nocturnal habits. I, that's it. That, that's the only, that, that's what's on my mind right now. I think the, the term night owl is stupid is the point. But yeah, so these actually will sit in their little wrappers overnight and get them nice and firm before the frosting goes on them. And you know, next up is going to be the frost of all of these beautiful new summer line cupcake bath bombs, bubble bombs that the Soap Prentice did. So, you know, let's go check out the frosting recipe. Okay, now for a whippable bubble bomb to frost these cupcakes. Now, we always start out with the liquid ingredients or the ingredients that need to be melted into a liquid. And so what's going on here is 1.5 ounces of cocoa butter. We will also be putting in 0.5 ounces of a lightweight oil. In this case, we are using grapeseed oil, but you can use whatever oil floats your boat for sure. Those get melted down, and then we add 0.5 ounces of poly if you are going to be coloring your frosting. You don't, this is not a necessary step if you're not using micas for your frosting. And uh, 0.5 ounces of your scent. And then also, after we mix that up and it becomes a fun slurry, we will also add two ounces of cocoa betaine to the mix, which is cool. Now for the dry ingredients, it is 18 ounces of baking soda, three big old tablespoons of kale and clay, two ounces of SLSA, as well as two teaspoons cream of tartar. Now. The reason why I love this recipe so much is because it's sort of light on the very ex on the really expensive ingredients without compromising the bubble. So that's cool. And once everything has been mixed up into the liquid ingredients, this will then get put into onto the um, the KitchenAid and we will whip all of the liquid ingredients into this. You can use your whisk attachment or your paddle attachment. I have not actually found that one is superior to the other in this, but you know, somebody who actually knows how to use mixers is going to be better informed on what even is the difference between those two. Cause I always get confused. I, I don't really know, but yes. So again, we have all of this stuff in the Pyrex here with the exception of the cocoa betaine. That is the last thing that goes in. And once that has been put in, I really do like to give it a good stir and make sure that everything in the liquid ingredients are incorporated. It does not look that like the soap Prentice is going to do that. She's just going to pour it all directly in. So that works too. Oh, nope, she's gonna stir it. Good, yes, cool, awesome. Taught you well, good job. Yeah, you want to mix it up to give it a nice good, I don't know, to make sure that everything is mixed well with the oils and the cocoa betaine, for sure. And then, you know, the poly in there as well. And then you're going to just let this continue to mix up for, I don't know, in total time, 
I'd say this mixes for maybe three minutes total, scraping the edges every little bit to make sure that everything's well incorporated, scraping the bottom, all of that jazz, and it's going to start to clump. And that's good. Your, your, your dough is coming together. So that's awesome. But we don't want a dough. We're not looking to roll this out and cut it into, you know, bars or whatever, which is a good consistency right now to do that. You can do. That's great. But we want it pipeable. And we want it pipeable with, again, without compromising the, the, uh, the bubbles within all of it. For sure. Yes. So what we do then in order to accomplish that is we add a little bit of witch hazel. Now, this recipe is for up to three tablespoons witch hazel, really. And we just add a little bit at a time, continue mixing until the batter starts to loosen up and look more like you know, frosting, really. Now, the purpose for all the ingredients that go into this, the baking soda is kind of an obvious, that's the big base for all bubble bar recipes, really. Uh, the SLSA is and the Coco Betaine, both, both used for the, the bubbling. So that definitely helps up, that's what makes the big bubbles, and that's awesome. Now as far as uh, the kaolin clay, the cream of tartar, the cocoa butter, that's all for stiffening. So something like this, again, without putting in that witch hazel, the structure is coming from the kaolin clay, the cream of tartar, and the cocoa butter. And so if you were to not put in that witch hazel, you would actually be able to shape and or mold this recipe minus the witch hazel into a pretty cool, you know, bubble bar of some sort, solid bubble bath of some sort. This is not the recipe that I recommend doing that for though, because it's not as user friendly or as hard at the end as, you know, the good bubble bar recipe, which I think I've given you, but if I haven't, you know, let me know and we'll do another video on it. Actually, somebody talked about the bubble wands, like the lush bubble wands, and so we might be playing with a firmer um, solid bubble bath recipe to do something like that really soon. So that might happen, that's cool. But now as you can see, it holds its form really well. It's not all droopy and schmoopy, and it pipes really nicely. And doesn't that look just gorgeous? It has all of the beautiful from the tip, there, like whatever tip that is. I think that's just a regular like star tip, right? I don't know. And it's all holding its form very nicely. And this will firm up again overnight and be hard enough to ship, you know, within 12 hours or so, which is awesome and super adorable. So you get your little, it's a bubble bomb. You get your, your bubble bath and your bath bomb in the same cute little package. Now the soap print is actually, modeled the new line off of an adventure she took for her birthday and her boyfriend took her to I, I think they went to the tulip fields which is super cool but she said that it was like a very like carnival type experience and so that's what everything is and let's see what scents she used for this um, it's a floral and fair carnival-ish theme. So we've got peach magnolia. We've got kissing and telling, cotton candy, and lilac and willow for the four scents. And I'm pretty sure all four of those, no, nope, the kissing and telling I think is from Aztec. The other three are from Nature's Garden. Cool, cool, cool. And yeah, no, these are like really big sellers in my line whenever we do more cupcake bath bombs they go like crazy and it's awesome and they're you know very easy to make the hardest thing is always you know figuring out the recipe formulation honestly and that's one of the reasons why it's so hard to actually find solid bubble bar recipes on you know the YouTubes because it takes a lot of work to make a really good one and here's the finished product of all of these beautiful cupcake bath bombs. 
they have set up. They look lovely. They are firm and ready to ship. And yeah, they're all super cute. I love this idea of doing like a carnival theme and all that jazz. And they're all beautiful. But you know, the Soap Prentice always does gorgeous things for everything that she does. So yeah, there's your uh, bath bomb and uh, solid bubble bath recipes. Go make them, have some fun. There they are, the cupcake bubble bombs with a bath bomb bottom and piped solid bubble bath at the top. And of course, they're cute and floral and awesome for our summer line, but also a recipe for you. I really love this recipe. This is one that I've been able to teach to several soap apprentices and they have never messed it up. Now, that's not true of a lot of like bath product type things, be it the solid bubble bomb, the solid bubble bath or bath bombs or you know, whatever. And so this one's very stable. I love it a lot. Just don't be too heavy handed with the witch hazel at the end. Just put it in a little bit at a time until it hits a nice like medium peaks type consistency that you would find in frosting and then you're ready to pipe. It's good to go for sure. If you're interested in like, you know, buying my cupcake bath bombs instead of making your own, they're at soapandclay.com right now, limited time because they sell out very quickly and they hit the bottom of the list whenever they sell out. So it takes a while to get to them to remake. So, you know, go snag them while you can, for sure. If you're interested in seeing what other recipes we give and the other things that we test and talk about and all the jazz, subscribe. That would be excellent. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thank you for being so. I'm glad to call you my sudzer. I'm out of here for today. I'm going to go eat my, uh, my cinnamon roll that does not have any frosting on it now. And I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.